question 33, they're asking, uh, this is called the unit circle. It's a circle that has radius 1 and center located at 0, 0. It says to sketch an angle whose degree measures 240 degrees. Well, standard position means that one of the sides of the angle is the positive x-axis. And uh, degree measure is 240. Well, um, if, if, this, if the uh, terminal ray is going straight up, that would be 90 degrees. So the left would be 180. And down, that would be 270, because it would be all the way around here, 90, 180, 270. So 240 is going to be past 180 here. I want to put some degree marks on here, 90, 180. 270. So 240 is somewhere between 180 and 270. Specifically, it's 60 degrees past 180. So what I'm going to do is make like a 60 degree angle over here. And that would make this angle here, this entire angle, would be 240 degrees. Now in a unit circle, uh, the sign of an angle is the y-coordinate of the point uh, represented by that angle or in that location. So for instance, uh, the fact that this dot up here at 90 degrees is located at 0, comma 1 means that sine of 90 is, is the y coordinate, which is 1. And while we're at it, cosine of 90 is 0. And that's true for every point. So the fact that this point is over here, well, it tells us that sine of 240 is definitely negative something because the y coordinate of this point. Uh, what that angle is exactly, well, you could just type it in to, to a calculator and that will come the answer, but I'll just also tell you how you could do it without that. Uh, this angle, acute angle from here to here, is, is 60 degrees. And if I draw in that triangle, this radius would be 1. Uh, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this would be half, this would be radical 3 over 2. The answer to this question is radical 3 over 2. See how it says find the exact value? If you type it into your calculator, you would not get an exact value. So to summarize, sine of 240 is the same thing as negative sine 60. And sine 60 is radical 3 over 2. Now. You don't want to try to do too much memorizing for this test, but I, I will tell you, as far as exact values go, there are nine of them that I think are worthwhile to, uh, to learn, to memorize. It would be the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. They're pretty easy to remember because the sine and cosine all have denominators of two. And this goes 1, radical 2, radical 3, and cosine goes backwards, radical 3, radical 2, 1. So just if you have those six, it's pretty uh, helpful. Tan is sine over cosine, and when you divide 1 half over, over radical 3 over 2, you get 1 over radical 3, which turns into radical 3 over 3. Uh, sine over cosine, in this case, is 1, and radical 3 over 2 over 1 half is radical 3. These are nine things that are valuable to uh, to know. But back to this question. Um, this is the way to do this question, and this is the exact answer, and that's, that's the only way you can get full credit. Question 34. Two sides of a parallelogram are 24 and 30 feet. The measure of the angle between, and, and they want the area of the parallelogram. Hmm. Interesting question. We have 30 we have this uh, 57 degree angle. This is 24 feet. And they want to know the area of the parallelogram. Well, area of a parallelogram is base times height. Now the base is 30. But the height is not 24. The height, we'd have to draw in this line segment right here. That's the height. Well, this right triangle here can be solved with trigonometry. We have the opposite side. I'm going to call this x instead of h so you don't get confused with hypotenuse. The opposite side is the unknown. 
the hypotenuse is known, so we say sine of 57 equals x over 24. Multiply both sides by 24. 24 sine 57 equals x. On the calculator, 24 times sine 57 is 20.128. Uh, they went to the nearest foot, so, uh, well, well this is 20.128. I'm not going to round on my calculator, I'm going to just multiply that by 30 right now. Best to save you rounding until the end, and get 603.8, which rounds to 604, which I, 604 square feet. Okay, moving on to question number 35. 35, express in simplest form, uh, 1 half minus, one o minus 4, that's, in, that's a 4 over d, uh, over 1 over d plus 3 over 2d. This is called a um, complex fraction. I think that the most straightforward way of doing this question, it's not the slickest, but I like it. Do it as, two, as three separate questions. Work out the top first. 1 half minus 4 over d, the common denominator is 2d. So let's multiply the top by d and the top of this one by 2. So that becomes d minus 8 over 2d. Make sure that's right. Multiply this one by d over d. Multiply this one by 2 over 2, yes. The other fraction, 1 over d plus 3 over 2d, common denominator is 2d. So this becomes 2 over d, this stays as 3 over 2d, so this becomes uh, 5 over 2d. So back to this, it's d minus 8 over 2d over 5 over 2d. You divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. These two d's cancel, and you get d minus 8 over 5, which is the answer to question number 35. Okay, these questions, part 3's, are worth 4 points each. The members of a men's club have a choice of wearing black or red vests to their club meetings. A study done over a period of many years determined that the percentage of black vests more than 60%. Uh, if there are 10 men, at a club meeting on a given night, what's the probability to the nearest thousandth that at least eight of the vests will be black? Well, this is really three questions in one. It's figuring out what's the probability of getting exactly eight vests, or exactly nine, or exactly ten vests. Now, there's a formula that answers these three parts, and it, it looks like this. Um, the probability of we'll say R successes in N trials. A success in this case is getting a, a, a black vest. It's NCR times uh, the probability of R happening to the R power and 1 minus the probability of R happening to the N minus R power. This looks complicated, but watch how easy it is. 10 is N, so we say for the first one 10 C8 probability of getting it is 0.6. That has to be raised to the eighth power. See how these two numbers are the same? This number is, is always 1 minus whatever this number is. And the exponent is always what ne it needs to be so that 8 plus it equals 10. So it's that. Or means add in this type of probability question. 10c9 times 0.6 to the ninth times 0.4 to the first. Or 10c10 times 0.6 to the 10th times 0.4 to the 0 power. So this is how you set up a question like that. Now I'll go over to the calculator and type it in. For the first one I'll type 10. <clears throat> if you push math and go over here to probability, there's the NCR button. So I have 10C8 times 0.6 raised to the eighth power times 
raised to the second power. And that's that 0 0.1209 is, uh, I'll write that down, point, point 0.1209 is this. I'll round to four decimal places. For the second part, rather than retype it, I'll go second enter, we'll go back to this, and I'll just change a couple of numbers. Change this to a nine. Change this to a nine. Change this to a one. And I get point oh four oh three. And for the last one, second enter. I'll change this to a zero. Uh, to make this a 10, I'm going to go second, insert. Hmm. Raise to the 10th. And finally, might have been better to just type this all in, but that's all right. Second, insert. So the last answer is point oh oh six zero. And when you add these all together, hopefully I don't make any mistake here for the world to see. 0.1, nearest thousandth is 0.167. So this is very worthwhile to memorize this. This question comes up a lot on this region's Question 37. Pretty simple question. This one finds all values of theta in the interval 0 to 360 that satisfy the equation sine 2 theta equals sine theta. Uh, there are different ways to do this question, but I'll tell you that there's a formula for sine 2 theta, and it is uh, sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. It's given in the back of the reference chart. So I'm going to replace sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cosine theta equals cosine theta. Here's where a lot of people lose points. They divide both sides by cosine theta. You should not do that. Instead, you should subtract cosine theta from both sides, then factor out the cosine theta. And we have two possibilities. Either cosine theta equals zero. Here's a cosine curve. It equals zero at 90 and at 270. The other piece is that 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0, 2 sine theta equals 1, sine theta equals 1 half. Now here's a sine curve, and there's actually two places where sine theta equals a half. From that chart before, um, theta equals 30 is one of the answers, but there's this other answer over here. Notice how this answer is 30 away from 0 because of some symmetry here. This one's 30 away from 180 on the other direction. So the other answer is 150. There's other ways to do that question, but for now, that's good enough. I guess in case you're wondering, if you do sine inverse of 1 half, you get 30. That's called the reference angle. Reference angle tells us uh, sine is positive in quadrants. 1 and 2. So our answers are going to be 30 degrees. And in quadrant 2, we take the reference angle and subtract it from 180. So that's where the 150 comes from. I think I'll save these last couple of questions. How many more are there? There are well, two more questions. But I don't want to rush them, so I will save those for the last video.